We are elated to have your company for part two of the Venerable Bhikshuni Mahaprajapati Gautami, vegan, the first Buddhist nun. As we heard in part one of this series, Mahaprajapati Gautami asked the Buddha repeatedly to be ordained as a Sangha member, but she was rejected each time. Our most beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai expounded on this story during a lecture given in 2008. Now, when Prince Siddhartha has become Buddha, and then of course many people came to him and want to stay with him as a resident disciple, huh? monks, yes. And his godmother also wanted to become a nun with him. At that time, nun was not uh, uh, very fashionable. Nobody has become nun yet. At that time, only monks, only men become mendicants. A woman was uh, unheard of. When uh, his mother, actually it's his godmother, because his uh, real mother, biological mother, died when he was born, remember? So the sister of his mother, took care of him until he was grown up. So actually, it's like a mother also, yeah? Yes. So anyway, this godmother also wanted to become a nun with him. And the Buddha uh, knew that uh, it would be very difficult because she was a queen mother, you know? Yes. And he had been uh, his mother for all these years until he was grown up. Of course, you know, often say, don't do this, don't do that, like all the mother, you know, brush your teeth, have you washed your hand, eat that, uh, broccoli, no, eat it, the spinach, good for you, <laughs> you know, all that. So anyway, he was worried that apart from, you know, maybe bossing him around and, and take him for granted, take his words for granted, she might also have disrespect for the, the monks' uh, assembly, the mother of the Buddha. You see what I mean? Even though she doesn't want to, she can't help herself to have maybe some attitude. Yeah. So anyway, so the Buddha has made a lot of rules for her. Yeah. Like, okay, if you agree to be a nun, then from now on, if you see any monk, you have to bow to him. Mm. Yes. Of course, if she bows to the monks, then she also has to have respect for the Buddha. It's not about respect for him that he worries about. Is he worry about that if she continue her royal attitude in the assembly of monk, then maybe she create karma for herself, yes? And also confuse all the monks, because she was old, too old to, to change, you know? Therefore, the Buddha has originally not allowed the mother to become a nun with him, but later, due to the interference of his foremost disciple, you know, the attendant, Anan, he said, oh, please remember she was the one who took care of you all the time up to now since you were young and helpless. If it hadn't been for her, you know, uh, we would not have the Buddha today to revere. So, oh, the Buddha said, okay, okay, but... <laughs> with condition, yeah? So he laid down many rules for her to follow, including having to respect any monks that she sees. Because she, he worried that she might stay there and, you know, a position of a Buddha's mother and always tell everybody what to do. Or check them out, controlling them, you know, then it will be like a family again. <laughs> See what I mean? And the, the monks already left all the family and the wife and... Uh, anything behind that controls him and coming here being controlled by the queen mother, then what's the use? Yeah? So, but anyway, because the mother of the Buddha was very determined to become a nun because she realizes that nothing else better than this. So she accepted everything. And she became just a humble disciple, she promised, you know? Therefore, the Buddha accepted her and she was the first nun ever <laughs> in his assembly, or maybe in the assembly everywhere at that time in India. Uh, I'm not sure before that if any nun or not, but I think she probably is the first one.
the venerable Mahaprajapati Gautami had accumulated merit with good deeds performed throughout many lifetimes. According to historical accounts, in one of the lives, she was born in Hamsafati to a family of clansmen during the time of the venerated Buddha Padumatra, the 13th of 27 Buddhas who came before Gautama Buddha. In another life, Mahaprajapati Gautami was born enslaved near Deer Park in Vaisali, which is the same location where Lord Sakyamuni Buddha later gave his last sermon before his earthly departure. Five Pratyaka Buddhas, independent or solitary Buddhas, requested assistance to prepare for the rain's retreat, including the construction of acceptable huts. Unfortunately, the affluent in the area denied the request and refused to help. Seeing this, Mahaprajapati Gautami humbly offered to build the retreat huts for the Pratyaka Buddhas. She organized 500 women to provide food for the retreat while their husbands built the huts. Mahaprajapati Gautami looked after the five Pratyaka Buddhas for three months. She coordinated the women to prepare 500 cloths which were made into robes and gifted them to each Pratyaka Buddha. Through this selfless deed, the Venerable Mahaprajapati Gautami and the 500 women became karmically bonded during their entire cycle in samsara, the cycle of death and rebirth. The women would eventually follow Mahaprajapati Gautami to become ordained into the female monastic order and attain liberation during the time of Lord Sakyamuni Buddha. In another previous life, Mahaprajapati Gautami was a weaver's wife in Baranasi, an ancient city and one of four pilgrimage sites for Buddhists. When 500 Pratyaka Buddhas were refused offerings from the wealthy residents, Mahaprajapati Gautami organized food for them. Her extraordinary deeds over numerous lifetimes led to being ordained directly by Lord Sakyamuni Buddha and becoming the founder of the Sangha for nuns. Upon learning that Lord Sakyamuni Buddha would soon enter Parinirvana, Mahaprajapati Gautami expressed to the Buddha that she did not want to live without him and wished to depart this world first. Gautama Buddha had one request for Mahaprajapati Gautami before giving her his blessings to enter Nirvana, to illuminate those who were in doubt of women's capability to achieve enlightenment and realization of the truth. Lord Shakyamuni Buddha asked Mahaprajapati Gautami to reveal her supernatural powers. The Venerable Mahaprajapati Gautami agreed and manifested her remarkable powers, such as passing through a mountain or wall, disappearing and reappearing, and becoming many from one and becoming one from many. Additionally, she had six suns rise concurrently. After her demonstration, Sakyamuni Buddha escorted Mahaprajapati Gautami to the monastery gate where she showed reverence to the world-honored one by kissing his feet for the final time. As news spread that the venerable Mahaprajapati Gautami and the 500 nuns who shared her desire were to enter Nirvana, numerous laypersons arrived at the monastery to offer their last respects. When everyone had been sent home, Mahaprajapati Gautami, at the age of 120 years old, and her followers went into deep meditation, achieving nirvana. Upon the departure of the noble ones from this mundane world, the very earth shook with heavenly flowers and meteors falling from the sky. There was the sound of thunder crashing and celestial beings could also be heard crying. The funeral of the Venerable Bhikshuni Mahaprajapati Gautami was a grand and holy occasion, with lotus flowers descending from heaven while imparting an aromatic scent in the air. Attendees could also see the sun, 
moon, and stars. The procession began at the monastery with flowers, singing, and dancing. Brahmas, Devas, Nagas, and Asuras led the procession with Devas carrying the golden hearses of the 500 nuns, followed by the hearse of Mahaprajapati Gautami, which was carried by the four great Deva kings. The Sangha and the worship Sakyamuni Buddha were last in the procession line. The Venerable Mahaprajapati Gautami's direct ordination by Lord Sakyamuni Buddha paved the way for female nuns who sought to enter the Sangha to learn the Dharma. As the principal mother of the Buddhist tradition, she demonstrated that women could achieve supreme knowledge and become fully enlightened. With gratitude, may we be inspired by the example of the Venerable Mahaprajapati Gautami to search for our own Buddha nature within, perform meritorious deeds, and uphold our morals to the highest standards. No to vegan, because you don't want to understand the part that says, Thou shalt not kill in the Bible. Virtuous viewers, thank you for your devoted company today.